Thank you for having me. I want to talk today about uh, a device that we have built. We call it BodyTune, which is a digital and AI-enabled auscultation device, so a listening device. And uh, we believe that it could be um, used for prediction and monitoring of several diseases. So we combine with this one auscultation, the listening with the a segmentation of the individual, um, individual information that we see, we classify it, we use AI to actually uh, create uh, uh, classifying parameters. And again, uh, used for monitoring and prevention. I want to uh, acknowledge uh, all the people that worked on this device. Um, and uh, also the uh, parties that are involved with it. It's a university-based uh, research topic uh, done together with an industry partner and uh, 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 some uh, other uh, startup companies that are part of our chair. So I, just to start with uh, what we initially thought, uh, what we would want to do is uh, to actually monitor the uh, carotid arteries. And why? Because carotid arteries um, can cause, uh, you know, several uh, uh, problem areas. It can can cause several problems in the in the brain, as many of you know. Uh, black can build up and can actually uh, reduce the blood flow, can lead to less oxygen in the brain, can lead to strokes, all kinds of things that can happen. And uh, it's very important to be able to monitor. Uh, the disease stage or the build-up stage, and maybe even do uh, preventive uh, use a, use a device if you could use it for monitoring for prevention, and for actually status uh, assessment. So what we have built is, and uh, we thought, so to get back up on this one, we thought that using something at home, uh, not going to the clinic at home, where you can actually have a device that you put on and use for this monitoring would be quite helpful. And uh, as people don't have ultrasounds at home and cannot actually use them most of the, uh, uh, most themselves, we thought about auscultation, which is actually listening to the, uh, to the sounds that come from the body. And in this case, a, a device where we use MEM sensorics and uh, uh, put it, uh, hold it close up to the, to the carotid, listen to the sound, and then see on whether we can actually get meaningful information out of this. So this was our first device. It's about two years ago. I presented that at SMIT uh, 2017, I think. So first device, uh, quite rudimentary, uh, quite complicated because we had a sensing unit on this, which was not really good. We compared that initially and used it uh, with a stethoscope device and uh, kind of like try to resemble a stethoscope device by building a, an electronic uh, uh, setup. Now, uh, what one of the initial ideas was is that we actually try to compare a carotid pressure waveform that you obtain by ultrasound with carotid audio signals and see on whether there is, uh, when you can establish a correlation uh, between those, two, uh, those uh, uh, two signals. And for that, you need to actually have fiducial points um, to simulate, to, to actually find starting and, and ending points. And I use a and we used a, a, a rather complicated algorithm and set up to uh, to extract these signals and to segment these signals and and put them over each other. And what was very interesting to see, you use these uh, these points for the auscultation uh, and the uh, and the flow uh, signals, that you actually can see different information on the flow. Uh, on the auscultation uh, uh, sound, then you can use on the Doppler sound. So if, if you look at the bottom part, you see they all, there's also four different subjects, they all look pretty much the same, but the actual uh, auscultation sound, significant, so, even in, so, in some segments, significantly varies from the, uh, from the uh, uh, Doppler. Uh, information. So that, that was uh, bringing us to the point that we believe we can use this information to characterize individual flow profiles and maybe even use it for biometric uh, biometric information. So this was some of the initial uh, work we did. We then used um, time variant uh, power density uh, spectrum analysis, also autoregressive modeling uh, uh, technologies, and also polar energies to extract uh, information from the uh, from the audio signals that we obtain, uh, focusing on uh, on lower frequency, medium, and high frequencies, and all kinds of other things, just to find classifiers um, that would allow us later on to be able to uh, really judge and determine a particular profile. So you see here on the, on the left side, you see two individuals and you see how 
the signals uh, uh, look like how the uh, the time varying power spectrum density looks like now the uh, pole projectors look like and you see there are significant differences between those two individuals do both by the way healthy individuals so uh, that made us believe that we can actually use this uh, auscultation uh, audio signal listening to use for biometric information and for actually monitoring because if you see a change and a difference to your own uh, to your own information that was obtained maybe half a year ago, you can possibly then later on using deep learning approaches uh, evaluate on whether things have changed to the worse or maybe to the better. So we have in the meantime improved the, uh, the system uh, significantly. We are, we're using now two microphones, um, membrane microphones or non-membrane microphones. And it's kind of like almost a stereo approach, but it's not used in that in that sense. But these uh, these microphones also now allow us actually to um, relatively uh, well get rid of the ambient noise and just focus on the uh, on the auscultation uh, uh, sounds that are directly coming from the keratins. This is the setup of the uh, of the device. We have connected it via Wi-Fi to a desktop application where we can then um, you know, look at the signals in, in more depth. What we wanna do in, in the next uh, few months is that we actually create a, create a, uh, a local uh, setup where we can determine already whether the signal quality is sufficient or not and do a, a, a little bit of, bit of a pre-evaluation, but for the subsequent uh, segmentation and evaluation. Uh, we would uh, send the data uh, then to a desktop or uh, to a uh, cloud application. So uh, this is how the set, uh, how the system looks at the moment. There's these two uh, openings with the for the sensors you see on the on the right side. Uh, there's some status slides. We don't have to go into into detail on this one. It's a fairly easy setup, which shows you whether the system is is uh, able and recording or not. And we will also now put up a light and indicator, which uh, makes what I just previously said indicates on whether the signal was obtained uh, properly and and uh, was of of good quality. So this is how you place the, uh, the the setup. This is even the the newest model that we did. So we have some iteration process. I think it's prototype number five. We do. Um, this is uh, Rutucha, one of the engineers who's actually developed the hardware. Uh, you know, putting it and showing the signals that you obtain directly. There's this little yellow part on the on the bottom you see in the screen. I'll, I'll po point out to this in, in in a little while, because what we not what we figured out. It, we, we, it's not only uh, uh, possible to actually listen to the to the carotid flow sound, but you can actually uh, listen to many other sounds that come from the body, and they may help us to extract more information and get more uh, more hints and on the on the health status of the user. So this is what it is. Um, and let me just go to this in, in, in the next or in, in next couple of slides to illustrate uh, what I mean by that. So this is an, an a, a, a more detailed. Um, uh, analysis of the signal, you can now scale it up and down. Uh, just everybody knows how to do this. This is the, the second scale. Uh, this is the uh, uh, is is a very um, accurate uh, information that you can obtain, and then you can also uh, uh, assume, looking at this signal, that there is lots of information you can extract by using advanced signal processing uh, techniques. So this is, for example, let me just go back one second. This is, for example, a a, a non-stented, uh, uh, sorry, a non-stented non signal. This is a stented signal. You always see it's a little smoother. Um, and uh, so you, we, we also believe that you can actually use it uh, to determine when the right point is to use standing, maybe to monitor a, uh, a, a disease uh, that is ongoing and determine when is the right point and also to monitor on whether a stent uh, you know, is working properly and maybe becomes stenotic at some point in time. Um, so here's the, uh, is the, uh, the, the signal that you can actually extract and widen and uh, you can uh, get uh, quite a bit of detailing. You also see that there's relatively little noise uh, in the signal, um, which uh, makes us also believe that the information extraction is, uh, after the filtering that we do, is, is quite uh, usable for further, um, further uh, deep learning approaches. This is what I uh, said before. So, so what we do now is we actually uh, acquire uh, data streams that are, uh, there's a little sequence behind that. So we start with the normal breathing through the nose, then we have some non-breathing approach, then we do some controlled respiration. 
um, swallowing sounds and also some coughing sounds. So we hold the device there <coughs> and cough into it. And uh, we, we also you know, feel that we can actually evaluate, uh, maybe it could be even used for some uh, COVID-19 related uh, evaluations or at least a distinction on whether a potential patient has a normal cough, uh, maybe some pneumonia or uh, COVID-19 or other coronavirus related uh, 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 cough uh, symptom changes. So I, I don't know, this, it's all open, but I, I believe that the data points that we have um, make us believe that we can use it. So you see the, 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 the different signal qualities that we have, the green uh, signal you see at the bottom is basically similarity measures. The red is, the, is an envelope of the signal. So that there's different types of strategies that we have uh, of evaluating and analyzing the signal to be able to segment the data points out of it. Uh, if you look at the red uh, signal, you clearly see there's a significant difference between the normal breathing, the apnea uh, uh, sounds, and then heavy breathing. So you can use this quite nicely to segment the, uh, the uh, data points out. Also, you see that on the on the swallowing part, you see the green line that is uh, significantly different from any of the other uh, signals you see. So these ones we use mainly for the segmentation uh, uh, points. So here's a, 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 an example of when you have segmented these out and you can now subsequently use them in, in uh, for the feature extraction, uh, what, an, what a uh, heart sound looks like, what deep breathing uh, looks like, and what swallowing looks like. So our, our, uh, our next steps are that we will create a, a, an, an app and we'll create a, a better user interface and we'll, should be able to then uh, ex not only extract the data, but uh, work on the data, uh, compare them with other people, uh, and hopefully get some uh, further conclusions on what the data, the, the feature extraction really means. So we want to combine this also um, with some point of care ultrasound and with a digital twin approach um, just to be able to monitor diseases. You can do things, monitor at home. You can also uh, combine it with data points that you acquire at the, at the uh, uh, ambulatory uh, doctor's uh, visit and then actually create data points for your own uh, use later on. So um, if you look at the trend map of what happens in, 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 in healthcare, uh, this device could uh, actually be used for a lot of, a lot of things uh, of, of monitoring a lifestyle, human body diseases, it would also be used for some mental stress application. Maybe you can actually see some stress related issues even on the sign. So there's a lot of opportunities, a lot of options that we believe we have not uh, uh, analyzed yet. And uh, there's, a, there's a good hope that the, that audio actually is uh, usable for that as well. So we invite everybody to actually help us, um, you know, create more data points and, and, and make this a more powerful tool. So as a summary, signal processing, feature extraction, and the classification allows us to uh, create individual profiles. So we, we, we actually have uh, shown that you can get biometric information and that my profile looks different than anybody else's profile, which also means you can use it for monitoring. Uh, of your own status and uh, possibly uh, see on whether there are any detrimental effects uh, uh, um, developing. The deep learning comparing with uh, other data points, big data, uh, hopefully uh, at least has the, has the possibility to use for prevention in the future. Uh, we uh, believe also that the combination of not only looking, uh, uh, listening to the auscultation sound, but also the analysis of swallowing, coughing, respiration, and other things uh, will be able to um, be able to classify and uh, uh, quantify diseases. So um, there's some hope on this one. And uh, if you combine it with, uh, with a, a point of care ultrasound, for example, you may be able to create data points for a digital twin. So all in all, audio is very powerful and uh, we're quite excited about the possibilities and hope that you're excited as well. And uh, this is my team. Thank you very much. Everybody working on it on the right side. You see some of the uh, science references uh, particularly related to this device. Thank you very much.